Now I'd like to give uh, a couple examples of men who actually fell away from the Lord and who did come back and repent. And some other scriptures that re pertain to receiving mercy from a backslidden state or from falling away or from falling from grace. And I'd like to begin with David, a well-known person of the Bible who was a tremendous man of God since his youth. The Lord gave to him a kingdom to be king of Israel. Uh, he later fell away through his sin of adultery, murder, lying, uh, with his sin with Bathsheba. Uh, he became selfish, and instead of being out with his, his army, he was actually in his kingdom. This is where the devil came in and tempted him to lust after Bathsheba, which he did who committed adultery with her, murdered her husband, tried to pin it, the birth of Bathsheba's son on Uriah, which he refused, and then later he did murder him through a conspiracy. After which the, uh, the Lord sent, David, uh, sent Nathan, the prophet, to David, uh, basically rebuking him and giving him a very similar analogy of taking something that did not belong to him from a very poor man and David got enraged about it and Nathan told him well you're the man you are the person who has taken from a poor man and uh, David was struck in his heart he was humbled over that and he received what the Bible calls godly sorrow and godly sorrow brings forth uh, true repentance uh, not to be regretted, but a worldly sorrow will lead to death, as in a case of like a Judas, or it can go either way. You can be humbled by the sorrow to where you get your life right with God, or you can produce a worldly sorrow that will lead to death. Here in Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 13, we see David says here, So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. He's acknowledging what he's done. He knows that he has fallen from from grace here, he knows that he has he has committed great sin against the Lord. As a matter of fact, at the end of chapter 11, uh, the Bible says that David done uh, great evil in the sight of the Lord. So it says, I have sinned against the Lord, and Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin, you shall not die. So Nathan's letting him know the Lord does forgive. But again, it's the condition of the sinner. If you're truly repentant, that you're going to forsake and be humbled, uh, be humble yourself before the Lord, that you do repent and come back to Him. Yes, the Lord will receive you. Another example is uh, Peter, and we're going to read in Luke chapter 22. Where actually the Lord tells Peter, He knows that Peter's going to deny Him. And in verse 32 here it says, But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. So he's telling him, when you, ha when you have returned to me, so knowing that Peter would depart from him, how would he depart from him? Well, we all know Peter denied the Lord three times. As, as a matter of fact, uh, he denied him three times after the Lord had told him that he would do so. And uh, Peter remembered at the end. It says in verse 61, the Lord turned and looked at Peter after Peter denied him those three times. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. We see Peter's condition as uh, weeping knowing that he had denied him. And uh, just so we can know what the consequence is of denying the Lord, let's turn kind of quickly to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we read in verse 11, Paul writing this saying, This is a faithful saying, For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. 
Meaning, if we have died to sin, if we have died to the old man, if the old sinner has died and a new creation lives, we shall also live with the Lord. Verse 12, if we endure, a lot of it's here, if we endure, we shall also reign with him. So if we endure to the end, we're going to reign with the Lord. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Uh, it's true in Peter's case. The moment that he denied the Lord in that condition, the Lord if, would have denied him in return. Despite the fact that he was an apostle and a disciple. Uh, it also says here in 13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. A lot of people want to twist this and say, well, see, if you're faithful, God remains faithful to you no matter what. Well, that's not actually what it means in context. What it's saying here is, if we're faithless, he's still going to be faithful. He's still going to remain faithful to deny you in lieu of you denying him first. So it's up to us to endure. Uh, it's up to us to remain faithful to him. Uh, we, there are promises to those who are faithful to him, but we must first be faithful to the Lord. Uh, so in Peter denying the Lord, the Lord would have in turn denied him. Uh, this is why uh, he wept. Uh, it's obvious that he repented. He wrote uh, part of the New Testament, First and Second Peter, and uh, there was mercy available for Peter. There was mercy mercy available for for David, but a repentant and broken heart had to follow their sin, and we'll see later on here. Uh, we're going to look also in James, chapter five. It's not actually a an actual person of an example, but we do see here that James. Uh, makes mention to the brethren. It starts off in verse 19, chapter 5, verse 19. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So if any among you wanders from the truth, you wander from the truth, you become a sinner. Again, why? It says, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way, so when he he left, wandered from the truth, he became a sinner, another brother brings him back from the error of his way, saves that sinner's soul from death. So when he wandered from the truth, he became a sinner, he died spiritually, and the brother brings him back to the truth. He, he brings him away from the error of his way. Uh, Second Peter says that you can be led away with the error of the wicked. Or First Peter, rather. And it says that letting him, let him know that he who turns the sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So if you've wandered from the truth, uh, you can return to the truth. You can turn from the error of your way. Uh, multitudes of your sins will be covered, but you have to come back. That's that's the that's the remedy. You you have to return to the Lord. You have to return, turn from the error of your way and turn back to the truth. Uh, another another hope and a promise for the backslidden or lukewarm in this case is in Revelation chapter three. Uh, the Lord speaking here in verse fifteen. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have not need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. If you're in a state of lukewarmness, the Lord knows. He says, I know your works. So he says, because you think you need nothing, because you say you're rich, because you may have it all, so you think, the Lord's telling you here, you really don't. You need to get from me what you don't have. You need to get from me what only I can provide. And he's using analogies here, uh, gold refined in fire, white garments. You can only be forgiven from the Lord Jesus. And he says that as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous and repent. So repent of your lukewarmness. 
Repent of your self-sufficientness and turn to me, the only provider, the only way that you can be saved and be forgiven. So it is possible to be forgiven.